Um, hi, I'm Dr. Jennifer Strasser. I've been searching uh, for a topic, uh, ways to cover that wasn't a repeat of my last uh, lecture. And with the help of slides I found from the Scottish government that they produced in 2013, as you can see, I have decided to do their lecture uh, only with my own commentary because they didn't give me one. But uh, I hopefully this will keep you guys walking, give you good tips on what to look at and what to pay attention to um, and when to seek help. So I'm things that I'm going to talk about is personal foot care, um, keeping your feet clean because that's always important uh, and checking your skin, checking your feet on a regular basis. Uh, before I talked about some footwear, so we'll cover that again. Um, if you spot a problem, what to do, uh, the, the ever changing nail cutting, filing, uh, what to look for in your nails, and then we can go into questions. Does that seem okay? So here we go. Um, again, this repeats, uh, I would like you to know how to take care of your feet. I would like you to know how to and what to look for when you're checking your feet, uh, how to take care of them and, uh, criteria to get into uh, somebody that can help you, a podiatrist, your family practice, and worst case scenario, urgent care or an emergency room. So uh, personal foot care is a term used for uh, healthy adults and taking care of their feet. So cleaning your feet, you want to wash your feet uh, in the shower. Usually they make uh, different products that you can stick on your shower floor to help you wash your feet, or if you sit in the shower or a tub with a, an assistant seat, uh, you can run your feet through these uh, products uh, to get in between your feet if you aren't able to reach them, which uh, since most people, as you get over 50, have a hard time reaching your feet or have balance issues, uh, that's always a good way to do it. Uh, looking at your feet, of course, um, mirrors, uh, with a handle are a good way to do it if you can't bend your to check to the bottom of your feet in a chair anymore uh, or on a bed. Uh, wall mirrors are a good way to do it and spouses, uh, significant others can help too, children if you live with them. And um, keeping your toenails cut short. I see a lot of times in older individuals, uh, they come in with black spots on their nails uh, that are usually bruising because the nails are too long they're hitting the tips of their shoes or their shoes are too tight. So back to uh, the next thing is, is fitting footwear and uh, spotting the problems again. They tend to be really repetitive. Typical nail kits are nail scissors, an emery board, band-aids, God forbid that you need them. Um, I like, you know, like a skin wipe, a baby uh, wipes for babies work very well um, and uh, a moisturizing cream. So moisturizing creams, there are a lot of them on the market. I tend to tell people that having one and using it is better than buying the best one out there or at the time and having it sit on your shelf and collect dust. So to me, it's more important that you use a cream more than which cream. However, some are better than others. You wanna look for a cream that does not have a lot of alcohol in it. You want to look for something with more of a, a silicone base or a um, petroleum base, have beeswax or uh, some kind of a wax in it as well. What that will do is lock in the moisture and we'll see uh, where that will help as I, I continue. Problems with cutting your nails, uh, things that you need to pay attention to, people that have poor blood supply, somebody else should be doing this for you um, and not necessarily your children. You want to see a podiatrist and, or if you don't have bad nails, a salon can do a relatively good job. However, if they cut you, uh, that could be a problem. So poor sensation, of course, you won't know if you cut yourself until you're walking around leaving a blood trail. And I see this quite a bit actually. So if you cannot feel your feet, uh, certain medications make it more dangerous. Anticoagulants, of course, if you even nick yourself, you're gonna have a lot of blood 
hard to stop. Uh, steroids, again, uh, they don't clot quickly and they don't heal well. So that needs to be addressed. And chemotherapy, of course, because you are automatically immunocompromised, you want to have somebody uh, with a little bit more control, uh, not reaching your toenails. Uh, diabetes, always a high risk. Medicare takes care of this one. You can go see a podiatrist. Uh, again, with the anticoagulants, uh, they will be covered and the poor blood supply as well. Uh, the steroids, the chemotherapy, the numbness, not so much, but we try to get it covered. Uh, rheumatoid arthritis as well. Uh, again, see the uh, immunocompromised because they're on drugs to suppress the immune system uh, attacking the joints. So they have a harder time healing. Uh, certain uh, skin conditions, uh, nail conditions, um, skin conditions such as psoriasis, uh, again, back to, uh, they fall under the rheumatoid, rheumatoid complex of diseases where you're on uh, chemotherapy or a steroid drug trying to control this. So you are not as, uh, you do not heal as well. So in this case, of course, you want to uh, see somebody. Um, nail conditions, super thick nails. People don't know where to start. Uh, if you don't bend as well and the nail cutters that they have out there for the most part will not cut the really thick nails if you, from the angle uh, of coming down from the head and overlooking, uh, it's a lot harder. So in, in those instances, of course, you want to uh, get help. And if you are having any purulence, uh, pus, or pain associated with the skin and the nails, of course, uh, those are times to be seen or have nails cut for you. Uh, the other case would be uh, venous stasis disease uh, and uh, swelling of the feet and toes. Now, if you've had heart procedures where they've done bypasses, a lot of times they take vein grafts from the lower leg between the knee and the ankle. And so you're going to see the venous swelling there uh, that will cause your skin to swell up around the toes and the nails, making it much harder to see where the nails start and stop. And so that becomes a more serious condition as well. So in those instances, if you're having a hard time, uh, always definitely seek help. So feet clean, wash your feet daily. Either you can soak uh, in a little pan of warm water. Uh, if you shower every day, um, even with the, uh, the baby wipes, uh, is a good way to wash your feet daily. You have a lot of sweat. It's almost like underneath your armpits and things where you wanna wash them on a regular basis to keep them clean. Uh, soft brushes. I Sometimes I'll tell you a soft, an extra soft toothbrush. It's got a long handle. It makes it easier to get to. Um, also, you have, again, the, the suction cup uh, brushes that you can set on the bottom of the shower floor that will allow you to run your feet back and forth in them and it'll get between the toes and help get rid of the excess skin that can build up but not shed and uh, also get the the toe cheese as people like to call it. Um, soaking. When you soak not more than 10 or 15 minutes you don't want to macerate your skin so much that you risk it tearing and for soaking too long uh, you can also dry out your skin. So keep it more of a warm water as opposed to a hot water. Hot will definitely dry uh -huh. out your skin. Uh, that goes for your whole body in the shower. I know you feel cold. Uh -huh. uh, yes? I thought I heard somebody. I'm sorry. Uh, we're, we're holding questions until the end, but put it in the chat. Super hot water will dry out all your skin and all your skin can crack or become itchy. And so if your skin is dry and becomes itchy, you scratch it. Uh, some people don't realize that they're scratching through the top layers of skin and actually bleeding. And so that can be a dangerous thing. Um, pat your feet dry you, because you wanna make sure that all the surfaces are dry before you start putting, in the, putting on the cream. Uh, another way to clean between the toes is Q-tips. That's a really good uh, way to get between the toes, get that little toe cheese out. Kind of like you get just the basic outside of your ears. Again, it's a little more length. Uh, cotton pads too, if you have a way to hold a cotton pad. Um, another way is a blow dryer. 
on low, uh, warm. It will dry them. You'll feel like a hand dryer. You'll feel the skin cooling when it's wet, but then it'll start to dry out and become warmer. Um, and you can sit down and do that and not have to worry about falling over. So that's an, an also a good answer. Uh, so when you check your feet, you want to make sure that they're clean. Again, this is with a mirror or a significant other, or if you're still lucky enough to be flexible and be able to bend so that you can see the bottoms, great. If you still have eyesight, that's good. All of these things will diminish through age, so you've got to figure out ways to do this and make it a habit. Um, apply moisture to your skin. Sometimes you have a hard time reaching it. I say uh, uh, you can put it on a, a washcloth, a piece of wax paper, hold that in place with one foot while you're rubbing the bottom of it with the other foot getting the moisture in. Um, significant others can help with that as well if you can convince them, which is another part of having clean feet. They are less likely to be creeped out by rubbing it in. Uh, checking between your toes. Now this you may need a little bit more help with. Even I can't at 50, having turned 50, cannot reach my toes as easily as I used to. So as you get older, this is gonna be harder. You're looking for cracks, you're looking for maceration, uh, you're looking for little blisters. Uh, that could be the sign of, a, of something going on there. Um, if you find that you sweat a lot and you're getting moisture between the toes, rubbing alcohol on a Q-tip or a cotton ball just to dry it out is good. Uh, sometimes aerosol antiperspirants can cut down on the sweating. But I find as you get older, you don't increase in sweating, you tend to decrease. So uh, this may not actually pertain as you get older and older. Um, and then checking your heels. Um, if you do a lot of sitting with your feet up to help with the uh, swelling that you'll have, uh, putting your feet up, if your feet are rubbing in the same spots for too very long, you can end up with pressure sores and that is very bad. So uh, if you have to put up your feet for a long periods of time because of swelling, put them on pillows at the ankle so that your heels are not rubbing on the surfaces. But you also have to make sure your shoes aren't rubbing in your heels as well. I've had several of those recently. Uh, so something to think about with the heel counter in the back uh, where it rubs. If you're finding blisters, either take them to a cobbler and get it softened up or broken in or get rid of them altogether. It's just not worth it uh, for the problems that it can cause. Now, common skin conditions that you're gonna run across as you age, um, you're gonna have calluses on the bottom. They're gonna be yellow. You can see on the first left-hand side of the screen. Common places to develop them is underneath the second toe, but you can get them under the fifth or the third or fourth and on the edges of the big toe, very common places. Uh, and then of course your corns on your hammer toes like the baby toe or any toe in between. Things you can do, uh, a mild uh, emery board can help with that. They also make them on long handles. Uh, they usually have a, they're in the stores, Walmart, Target, Walgreens have long handled emery boards that you can scrub at those. There's also, uh, you can buy just fine sandpaper in the drugs, in the uh, hardware stores and work on it on a long handle if you're handy for the guys, if they feel like they want to create something as well. Um, but in uh, at podiatry, we can trim those down and help put off loading in the shoes to try to slow them down. Um, with the corns, of course, you wanna make sure your shoes are deeper and you wanna make sure that they're wide enough because a lot of times uh, if the shoes aren't fitting properly, that's a problem and that adds to the, the, uh, the callusing on the tops of the toes or the sides of the toes. Uh, women especially are very vain. They don't want to admit that their shoe sizes are changing and shoe sizes of course change as you get older. They get longer, they get wider. Um, you develop hammer toes with time. It's, it's age related. You get bony prominences where you didn't have them. Look at your fingers. Your fingers all have little knots on them. Same thing that happens with the toes as you age. And so your style of shoes have to change. Um, watch the seams. And we'll get into the shoes a little bit further. I'm getting off on a tangent here. So here's the dry skin and the cracking. This is where the moisturizer is important. Um, 
And of course, the extreme is on the bottom right, where if your cracks get infected, this is again, an extreme case, I don't really want to gross anybody out too badly, but this does come in quite often, actually, more often than I'd like. Uh, the skin cracks, people sit around with their heels rubbing on things, and this stuff happens. And so again, checking your heels and seeking help before it gets to this point is always better, please. It's better to see this before it gets to that. The cracks on the left bottom are, is much better to see in my office than the right bottom. And you'd be amazed how many people walk in with the right bottom going, I don't know when this happened, maybe a day or two ago. And you look at it going, no, 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 this happened months ago. You just didn't look. Um, but more commonly is the top right, where the skin gets very dry. Again, with age, with uh, decreased circulation, with decreased sweating. Again, back to the age thing. I hate the three letter A word as much as everybody, as I see it in my future as well. So when you get out of the shower, you get dried off. This is where the creams come in as opposed to the lotions. Lotions tend to be alcohol-based. The creams tend to have a wax base, the paraffins, the silicones, the beeswax, the, the, the um, petroleums. That will seal in the moisture from the shower, from the soaking of your feet and lock it inside to try to help. But the suction cup brushes on the, the floor of the shower will help brush off the extra uh, cracking here. Boy, I really miss being on a screen in front of you all so that I can point and show you I'm pointing to the dry crack skin on the top to show you that that stuff will come off, but it just not on day one. It will come off slowly as long as you're maintaining uh, some brushing and some moisture that will go away. Next one, this is why I have you check between the cracks of your toes. The hyperhidrosis, that's sweating. Um, Non-sweating is called anhydrosis. And both of them can cause cracking uh, between your feet where germs can get in and cause sores, cause uh, infections, cause, and what we're seeing here on the screen is a pretty severe case of athlete's foot. We always like to put up worst case scenarios when we're giving lectures so people can actually go, oh my God, I don't wanna to get to that point. And I don't want to see you at this point. I wanna see you before this point, please. But that's why it's important to keep your, between the toes clean and dry. They make things to deal with athlete's foot. Uh, they have aerosol antiperspirants and there are also special wipes. Uh, I've seen them in Target. I haven't actually looked in CVS or Walgreens, but I'm sure they're there to help stop it if you do sweat a lot. If you have grandchildren that sweat a lot, that will help them too. So that when they take off the shoes, you don't say, oh my God, where is that stench coming from? And we all know what I'm talking about. But we don't want to get to this point, And that's where sometimes the alcohol or the blow dryers can help us as we don't reach to dry as well with a towel. All right. And if you are drying with a towel, dear God, sit down so that you don't fall and crack your head. I've had that a couple of times and, and, and I don't want you with stitches or, or concussions. Now we're going to get to our shoe wear again. And I've, I've elaborated a little bit, but you want to make sure that the shoes are well fitting and, and, and sturdy. You want to make sure you want to watch the seams. This shoe has a lot of seams that we're looking at here. Um, any one of those seams can rub on a bony prominence. So, and it's a leather shoe. I like leather shoes. They're great, but they don't breathe. And if you do have a sweaty foot, you want more of the mesh shoe. I'm sorry, I live across the street from a fire hall. Um, the rounder the toe of the shoe, the better you're going to be, uh, especially if you have a bunion. Um, bunions, uh, are aggravated by shoe wear. They're not created by shoe wear, but I get a lot of people that come in with blisters or bad calluses because their shoe wear is too tight on their bunions. The older you get, the less we're thrilled about doing surgery to get rid of the bump 
And so we're looking for ways to, uh, that things that we can adapt. And so the wider toe shoes, again, will adapt uh, with the bunion. You want to make sure the shoes are deep enough with the hammer toes uh, that rub on the tops of the shoes. Uh, again, a mesh will adapt better than the leather will adapt. A leather can be stretched or a synthetic leather, leather can be uh, stretched, but it's much harder, it takes much longer. And so uh, things to consider. Synthetic materials, you know, the fake, again, the fake leathers, um, they can cause uh, rashes if they get wet. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Uh, people can be allergic to the synthetic materials. Uh, again, I, again I, I'm much more fond of the meshes and washing the seams than the straight up leather, although the straight up leather is dirty. So it's whatever works for you. I don't really care as long as it works and it's not rubbing. Uh, the shoes should be able to support your foot. You don't want to bend your shoe in half. Uh, those of you that watched my lecture the last time, watch me bend a shoe in half. I don't have one near me to show you, but if you can't bend it in half and touch the tip of the shoe to the back of the heel, that's sturdy. If you can't wring it out like a dish rag, that's sturdy. Um, I discussed with Laura maybe doing a, uh, a workshop when we're all able to be in the same room again safely. Um, I would be happy to do more of a workshop than necessarily a uh, full-on lecture so that I can go over shoes and, and, and discuss these things. Um, arch support gets more important as you get older. Uh, pull the liners out of your shoe and see if the, the arch support is sturdy. Uh, probably most of them won't be. Um, I deal with a lot of shoes. Um, you may end up having to look elsewhere for arch support. There are a lot of good over-the-counter ones and uh, most of the podiatrists in the area can uh, discuss where to get them as opposed to necessarily having to get the custom ones that run six or $700. Uh, I want you guys to be able to walk, but if you're not walking 20 miles, hiking 20 miles in a day and you're not running half marathons, you probably don't need the custom ones a lot of times. Uh, you guys aren't standing on your feet a lot of times, eight, 12 hour shifts. And if you are, we can discuss the real ones, but most of the time the over-the-counter ones will do what you need them to. Uh, laces versus Velcro and buckles, of course. Uh, the older you get, the harder it becomes to, to get down and tie your shoes. Arthritic conditions can uh, make it more difficult also. So they make elastic laces so that you can have a lace up shoe, but yet slip your shoe into it without having to bend over. Uh, long handled shoe horns will also help with the lace up or the Velcro or the buckles even. Velcro tends to be a lot easier for older individuals. However, depending, uh, it may not be snug enough for people with the narrow heels, they may still need the lacing. Um, buckles I find are out of fashion, you won't find a lot of them out there. Uh, if you do, they tend to have Velcro and it's a decorative thing. So I'm not really worried about the Velcro, or sorry, the, belt, the buckles. The, uh, it, it comes down to the lacing. They also make those curly, curly Q laces that will stretch out yet hold you pretty tight. And I've had a couple people come in with these almost like uh, loops that go around and lock into the lace holes. Um, and I think they're on Amazon also. And I can bring those so that you can touch them and see them at a workshop. It's just very hard here. Um, does all that make sense? I hope. Let's go on from this shoe here. Um, again, to mm -hmm. set Dr. an Jennifer, example, you wanna, this, yes? Is this a good time to take a few questions? We probably can, that's fine. Okay, because we had a really good one from John who says he's a little confused. If I am avoiding leather, won't I be using synthetic materials? It depends on your foot type. I, I don't mind real leather as opposed to the synthetic and the, the mesh or the cloth ones are a little bit different. Um, they aren't quite as tight. You don't have to stretch them out. Um, it's some of the 
the ways that they make the synthetic leathers more than the cloth ones that tend to cause the allergies. Does that make sense? Um, the leathers, you have to go get stretched. Sometimes the cloth will stretch and you don't end up with the blistering. Um, John, could you unmute yourself and, and uh, have a follow-up uh, question? Okay, I see that you're, you have okay. unmuted. There he is. Okay, there he yeah. is. Yeah, I didn't know what I was doing. Um, first, I just want to say, Jennifer, this is just wonderful stuff, and I really appreciate you doing this for us. Um, so you said avoid the leather because it doesn't stretch, and then the, 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 the slide said avoid synthetic materials, and I thought, well, if I'm not using leather, won't I be using a synthetic material? And what I'm hearing you say is some kind of a mesh. I mean, the mesh could actually be a, a nylon or something like that, as long as it can breathe. Am I, am I understanding Correct. you correctly? It, the, yeah, the, lab, the material, the cloth or the, the meshes will stretch a lot more and accommodate the hammer toes or the bunions better than the leathers because you have to stretch them out and they can rub blisters in the meantime. But most of the time you're wearing the synthetic materials on your body, the, the, the nylons and stuff. And you'll know if you're allergic where you don't necessarily with the synthetic leathers until they get wet, know okay. if you have a problem. All right, thanks, I appreciate it. No problem. Um, Jennifer, we had another question earlier um, back when you used the term macerate. Oh, I'm sorry, it ends up, you know how your, your skin when you're doing dishes or you've been swimming, they look very whitish and wrinkly um, that is what I'm referring to as maceration. And if you soak your feet too long, they can look like your fingers when you're done doing dishes. Or getting out of the swimming pool. Or getting out of a swimming pool. All wrinkled. Yeah. And or if you're in the shower too long. Is that a bad thing? It makes the skin, uh, when you get that wet for that long, your skin can dry. It, it, it makes it easier or more dried out when you do dry off. And it also makes it easy to tear in those early moments while you're drying off if you bump things or step on things. Oh, it can thank tear you. easier. And that's what I'm concerned about is the tearing and the injuries. All right. Any other significant ones that you saw? I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to use that term. Um, and I hope I've been trying to keep it as, as lay term as I can. Macerate? <laughs> yeah. That one is one I just, I'm sorry, I just, it rolled off so quickly. <clears throat> that's, that's all of our, our written questions so far. Oh, good. Okay. So all of us remember wearing shoes like this. And if you're sloshing in your shoes, it's not good. But if the shoes are too tight, of course, it's not good. Um, every shoe brand fits differently than every other shoe brand every shoe style within the same brand fit differently. And so the shoe size that you think you are is a really good place to start, but that does not necessarily mean that's your size. And I'm really dealing with a, uh, the ordering off the internet as opposed to the brick and mortar store trend that we're seeing. Um, because you really do need to see where your toes hit. And I'm not a huge fan of having to mail things back, order a different size, try it out, mail it back if it still doesn't fit to another size. And, and, and this is what we're living in right now. And, and, and I see so many poor fits because people order the size that they've been all their lives. And yet they aren't that size. That's just what they think they are. Um, when you look at a shoe, and I'm going to hold my hand up for an example, when you look at a shoe, you want your thumbs width from that knuckle here to here. You want that to be in front of your big toe, the tip of your big toe. You want that for room. If you are going to be just for normal walking, 
which is, you know, everybody. When you do a hike or a run, you want your shoe to be this long ahead of your big toe because you need room for your toe to shift on uneven terrain, uh, hills, tree roots, things like that. So the hiking running shoe is going to be different than your walking shoe. Um, and there are running styles out there and there are walking styles out there. And if you're walking, you want a walking shoe. If you are running, you want a running shoe. If you're hiking, you need a hiking shoe. There are different things built into these shoes, different um, cushioning, different adaptations meant for these different activities. Um, a CrossFit shoe can do a lot of different activities where the running shoe is strictly for the forces of running and the walking shoe is strictly for the forces of, of walking. So if you're gonna hike and you're gonna jog and you're gonna walk, the CrossFit shoe might be a better one because it's designed for better, more different activities. So it's things to think about like that, but always, um, always check your shoes. If you've had the shoes longer than a year, check them. Leather shrinks with time if you haven't worn them. So if you have a pair of shoes you bought 10 years ago, their chances are they've either shrunk or your feet have gotten bigger or both. Um, and so you need to keep an eye on those things. Um, but yeah, it's different. To, it's, it's important to know that even within the same styles uh, or the same brand, you've got to check different styles. <laughs> it's very important. Don't always assume that an eight in the walking shoe is going to be an eight in the running shoe because it's a different style. <clears throat> Uh, if anything falls over, it's my cat who decided to chew on the wires right now. I apologize if he runs across the screen too, but entertainment. So um, these are different types of slippers. You want to check slippers also. You want to make sure that there's a heel. I'm not a huge fan of the slip-on slippers because you can slip out of them on a stair. They can uh, catch a rug, uh, a throw rug. Um, I've walked out of my, I, I have a pair of, of flip flops that I wear as a slipper and they have a built-in arch. So I'm wearing proper shoe, but I have walked out of them on a stair. I've walked uh, going up and going down. So not, and it, they've fallen off. It's not always a good thing. So a good heel uh, to a slipper is important. A good sole, you want a sole on a slipper as you get older, especially because if you step on things and it ends up in the bottom of your foot, that's where the emergency room, the urgent care or trips to the podiatrist's office where they're digging things out and then you have to heal them is not good. So you wanna make sure it'll stop a thumbtack, okay? Um, so the sturdy sole is important. Also the Velcro uh, or a strap on it, which is usually a Velcro. If you have swelling, again, uh, if you've had heart procedures where they've had to take vein out of your leg, you may swell by the end of the day um, and you need a shoe or a slipper that's going to accommodate you. And the Velcros tend to do that more um, and they will adjust. You're having a good day. You're low, low swelling today because it's cooler out and you didn't eat packaged ham or a, a can of soup as opposed to lower salt things. Um, you have to adjust for the amount of swelling that you're having that day and you do not want it to rub. Um, and certain shoes, certain slippers that are elastic around the mouth of the opening where you put your foot in could rub you a blister. <clears throat> so the Velcro is good, um, especially because sometimes people can't find a shoe that will accommodate a, uh, a swollen foot and they end up using a slipper as their shoe. So having something that's going to adjust is better. This is an example of a lousy slipper. Again, see, there's no structure to it. You've broken the heel down. Um, it doesn't fit, you're flopping around. Again, that will make you more prone to falling down the stairs and getting injured. It will make you more prone to falling out of them and uh, even just walking across the floor at going flying and you losing your step. Uh, the whole purpose is to keep you guys active so that you can keep your heart healthy. And uh, this could lead to injuries that lay you up 
And for every day you're laid up, it takes two days to get your strength back. So think, or two to three days. The older you get, the longer it takes. So you don't want to lose your strength. Um, another thing with shoes and slippers, before you put them on, shake them out. Make sure there isn't the rock or a, a child's toy, a dog or a cat toy that is in there that can rub sores. By the time you notice something, you may already, and you get a place to sit down to get it out, you may already have the blister started. So if you shake them out, run your hands through them, make sure there's no sharp objects or sharp rubbing spots, any holes in the material that can rub you a blister with long-term walking, that will work much better for you. Uh, it's just a precaution. It takes so little time to do most of what I'm talking about uh, as a precaution. So habits, build habits, good habits. Trimming your nails and spotting problems. The person on the left, that picture is already missing a big toe for God knows what reason, most likely an infection. Um, they have sores all over the place. Please get them seen before they get red and they get swollen. Uh, makes our lives much easier. If they get red and swollen and you're already being treated, call. I have a rule. I want to know if it's 3 a.m. on a Saturday. I'm sure you're, any podiatrist you go to will want to know at 3 a.m. on a Saturday or a Sunday morning if you have swollen toes that needs to be addressed immediately. And again, the shoes. Shoes can rub a blister and make it look like this toe, uh, the second toe. Uh, during the day, if you see this at night, we need to call us, call us, please call. Um, the toe on the uh, far right, again, that's a sign of an ingrown toenail. That little red spot is what we call a pyogenic granuloma. Uh, in the past, uh, the lay term is proud flesh or uh, hyper growth of tissue trying to heal itself, but it wants to bleed and it hurts. And this is from improperly cutting a toenail. And so uh, again, it needs to be seen. Antibiotics are needed. So the sooner you see it, the less aggressive an antibiotic we need to treat that. Cutting toenails, of course, straight across, make sure you can see both edges. The only time it gets cut down on the side is if the podiatrist does it um, because it's digging in or the shape has changed. Um, but you need to call us if there's blood, pus, redness, warmth um, is another sign. S the swelling again, if it hurts, please. It's easier for us to say it's no big deal and to deal with it, uh, maybe do a little bit of trimming or cut the callus down to get rid of the pain than it is to wait until it gets to this point. This is the one. The I'm sorry. One I see. High risk people, people with blood supply issues. Again, people with heart conditions, if the, the blood isn't pumping far enough, uh, if you've had veins taken out, if you have other issues. If you're having heart problems, chances are there's other circulatory things going on. Um, if you're a diabetic, if you have other, again, um, issues. These are worst case scenarios. Again, um, most people do not present like this. Um, although I have had a couple of the top right show up, never the bottom left. Somebody's already seeing it by the time it gets to that point. That is gangrene. The top right is a blister that needs to be addressed, but it's infected. The bottom, or sorry, the far left is a callus that didn't get addressed, didn't get trimmed down. And these can be done, dealt with on a regular basis um, and keep them to the, not getting to this point. But please, please see somebody. And the toenails come to us we can trim them down to keep them from looking like this. Okay, um, see somebody, uh, family, friends can call and get you an appointment. These are neglected nails, but they're also fungal nails. And this can come from athlete's foot that has gotten into the nails. And that happens very commonly 
If you have athlete's foot in the toenails, you can get it in the feet. And if you have it in the feet, you can pass it the toenails and back and forth. And so um, we can address that as well at, at a visit and trying to prevent uh, problems or just manage them. Because as you get older, the medications with you deal with with heart conditions may not, it, it may not be a good idea to take the medications that are, uh, that treat the toenail fungus. And so um, we can discuss options in controlling and maintaining, but the toenails can be trimmed. We know how to do it. We've got the tools to do it. The nail salons will not. Um, and uh, we can help manage the athlete's foot, the toenail fungus um, to help because the toenail fungus won't kill you unless it creates sores in your toes like this could if you're walking on this or attempting to walk on this. So um, sometimes my dad is 84. He had a big toenail that didn't look like this, but it is very thick and it rubs in his shoe and it was causing a blister underneath the nail. And so I keep it trimmed back and he understands that the athlete's foot won't kill him and that keeping it trimmed back and thinned down is the better way to go. Um, he's got a pacemaker. He's on uh, medications to deal with uh, the pacemaker and the heart block condition that he has. And it's not good to take the pills that can cure this. He's better off with the management. So um, there's a lot of ways to manage foot conditions that don't necessarily cure the foot conditions, but keep you out of trouble. And the whole reason I'm doing this today is to keep you out of trouble, uh, keep you walking, keep you healthy. And uh, I believe with the exception of questions, this is the end of my lecture. Okay, oh, Dr. Jennifer, thank you so very much. And so I will try to go back to the full screen uh, participants and talk, where I go, stop sharing my screen. There we go. So I hope that uh, in conclusion, everybody learns how to take care of their feet and stay walking and when to get help. Oh, this is wonderful. I Let me start with some of the questions that came in uh, okay. during, during your speech. Um, uh, let's see. Um, are most of your patients over 50 years old? Do you see young adults also? I see both. I'd say it's a 50-50 mix. Um, I see little kids with ingrown toenails and warts and uh, arch pain, but I see the adults with the same problems. Um, and the elderly, older adults, I don't say elderly because elderly is more of a mind frame, or I like to think of it as more of a mind frame. Um, but I see older individuals with the same problems. So uh, everybody has a lot of the same problems uh, and they are addressed sometimes the same, sometimes different based on age. But yes, I see all age groups. Okay. Um, uh, does, you mentioned before that Medicare covered podiatry for people with diabetes. Does yes. it also cover people uh, who don't have diabetes? A lot of times it does. Um, for foot condition, uh, for nail conditions, a lot of times uh, you have to have the diabetes, the anticoagulants or the circulatory issues. But uh, a lot of us do what we can to make sure we can try to get them covered. Um, otherwise there's usually a, you, you can still come in but it tends to be cash. Um, and we try to make that manageable for people. Oh, okay. Um, Tom Love had a question. I believe it, it was wondering if you can put cream between the toes also. Some say not to. The diabetics, we don't really want them to get the cream between the toes. Uh, it can get, again, can cause maceration. We really just want it dry and clean. If you notice the cracking, that's where you seek uh, the help to get the ideas to keep the cracking down. But if you get cracking between the, between the toes, it's usually the athlete's foot. So go toward the athlete's foot creams. 
and uh, rub them in and you don't use them in big quantities, you very light. So it doesn't tend to get macerated. Okay. Tom, did that answer your question? Do you have a follow-up question? No? Okay. <laughs> All righty. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Um, uh, let's see, a, a direct question from um, Carter. I, I, how do you decide if peripheral neuropathy is circulatory or versus a potential nerve-related condition? The neuropathy is not usually um, circulatory it, uh, or blood flow caused. It tends to be all nerve-related. There's a lot of things that can cause a neuropathy besides the diabetes. If you have back issues, you can have neuropathy. It can be down the leg. It can be in certain parts of the legs. It can be in certain toes, all of the toes. Um, so uh, it can come from the back. It can come from knee or hip issues uh, where it puts pressure on a nerve. And then shows um, up in your feet? Is that, that shows up in your feet. I had one person that had neuropathy until they got a new knee. And once their knee repla was replaced and there was no pressure from the arthritis in a certain <laughs> position, they got their feeling back. Um, that's more often than not, not the case, but I've seen it. Here we go with the fire engines again. I'm sorry, folks. Um, neuropathy can be caused by vitamin deficiencies, B12. Um, it can be caused by a thyroid condition uh, that needs to be addressed, a parathyroid condition that needs to be addressed. It can be uh, too high a vitamin, such as a B6. Too much B6 is toxic, so you have to really look at the amount of B6 you're getting. Um, it can be caused by alcoholism uh, or previous alcoholism. It doesn't have to be a current case. It can be an old case, and it's just taking its toll. So there are a lot of reasons for neuropathy. Um, and sometimes we don't know that reason. We don't actually pinpoint it. And that's what we call idiopathic, which is we have no idea, but you have it. No idea, um, but <laughs> yeah, it, it's sorry, but you know, you've got it. We don't know how to fix it. So um, you just it, go through the list of trying different things then? Right. Just and one-sided tends to be back or joint, hip, knee, uh, related uh, or injury relate, related uh, arthritic pressure, pushing on a nerve as opposed to equal and both sides. If it's all your toes, both feet, then it's more of a systemic or a, a full body coming from somewhere else mm -hmm. than a hip, a knee, a back, okay. a nerve root issue if that makes sense. And so uh, that helps narrow it where we're looking. Vitamin issue uh, would be both sides because it doesn't pick a side. Okay. Where a nerve, a back, a hip, a knee would pick a side. Hmm. Um, John Constantine asks, what is the connection with RA? Rheumatoid arthritis, um, as far as neuropathies, uh, it's a, an, Immuno, uh, your body is attacking itself and causes damage to the joints, which then care, can uh, put uh, pressure on, on nerves because the joints get uh, enlarged um, and can cause pressure points that way. I have lost you, Laura. Oh, there oh, you I, go. I'm sorry. I, I don't have a fire engine. I have a <laughs> a spouse. <laughs> I didn't hear your spouse. Maybe you don't hear my fire engines. I don't know. <laughs> did that answer the question on the RA? Now, RA, uh, Constantine, did, um, do you want a follow-up question? As far as getting your toenails trimmed and taking care of your skin, of course, the, the medications cause you to be more immunocompromised, so you've got to be safer with your skins and your, uh, your skin care and, and your nails. Okay. Um, and speaking of that, um, Catherine Cavanaugh wants to uh, get some advice about the use of foot powder and especially Dr. Scholl's foot powder. Is that a good one? Um, any of the foot powders, Dr. Scholl's, Gold Bond, they've all got about the same 
uh, Johnson and Johnson's baby powder. What it does is it soaks up moisture if you need it. If you find that you're having uh, too much moisture between the toes, uh, it can sometimes help with um, uh, blistering in the feet as far as preventing uh, rub. It takes down some of the friction in your shoes and the soles. So it can help with friction and, and blistering too. Preventing, prevention. Catherine, do you have a follow-up question you'd like to ask? It also helps with odor. Ah. Oh, well so it's whatever good. one you like the smell of. Okay, thank, thank you. Cornstarch can help with that as cornstarch is similar. Mm -hmm. Although you might end up having to cook your feet. <laughs> oh, just kidding. Um, Thanks. Thanksgiving is coming. <laughs> there, there you go. Oh, oh, oh dear. Oh, oh. <laughs> Pre-marinating. Pre yeah. Well, um, uh, John has a actually a, a follow-up question. John is just full of questions. Oh, yes. Just He's you know, a good thinker. Just wait. He's got um, a good smile, too. <laughs> Well, John wants to know what the symptoms are of neuropathy. Uh, neuropathy symptoms are uh, many. So just because yours I'm, is not mentioned or you only have one of the ones I mentioned, uh, that's not unusual. It can be burning in the toes, uh, tingling, pins and needles, um, little stinging, feelings, little zinging, shooting to the toes uh, or the feet. Um, cardboard feeling, I hear. Um, when you wrinkle your toes, it feels like the bottom feels like cardboard uh, or stiff, that kind of not right. Feels like you could feel like you're walking on glass is another feeling that I've heard people describe. Um, although I do, not as much the walking on glass as much as the other ones. And it tends to be at night or at rest. And I don't know why. John, did, do you have a follow-up question for that? And it will No, I just wanted to know, I just wanted to know how I would know if I had neuropathy, but uh, you've answered the question. Yeah. Um, and it will usually start in the toes and work its way up. So it starts in all the toes first. Um, if you have a numbness, is that? You can have a numbness too, um, but most people will num notice the, uh, those other symptoms before they notice the numbness. Now, if you have a back or a joint pinching on a nerve issue, you might be able to you know, prick your big toe or, and not feel anything, but the others you do. So uh, that could be the, the difference as well in a numbness situation. John, does that- Thank uh, you. Okay. Uh, we have another question from Tom Love. He wants to know about treatment for neuroma on the ball of the foot and what causes are that? <clears throat> Neuromas uh, a lot of times start from well, they always start from a nerve being pinched between the toe or between the, the bones. And like biting your lip or your cheek, it tends to swell, which makes it easier to pinch and, 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 and uh, traumatize and it swells again. And so ways of treating the neuromas are widening your shoe because tight shoes around the ball of your foot and your toes lead to the pinching arch support, getting better arch support helps with, can help with neuromas. Uh, different offload paddings that can be done in a podiatry office can help with neuromas. And then we start moving, and those are all uh, very uh, conservative treatments. And now we're moving into the non-conservative treatments of, of possibly a cortisone injection to get the nerves to unswell because cortisone is a uh, is like an, think of Advil, where it's an anti-inflammatory. And so it tends to shrink the nerve and try to keep it from being pinched again. And we use that in conjunction with the other conservative issue uh, treatments. And then there are other things such as um, alcohol injections to the nerve. And what that does is kill the nerve. Mm -hmm. Don't like to go that way because then you're numb. So we try to avoid that one. 
uh, there has been some needle freezing, about a 50-50 reaction. We don't do it a lot around here, um, but you can inject a needle with ultrasound and actually send a cold wave down to the nerve. Again, that kills the nerve. And then uh, depending on the size and uh, whether you have responded conservatively or just not getting anywhere with a series of shots, that's where we actually go in and cut it out. Um, I'm doing my second one in a couple of weeks that I've done in the last three years, four years. So it's not an not happening very often that you're cutting it out. So going to the podiatrist and, and, and working with the conservative therapies and, and, and following through with them, um, as opposed to going and listening to the therapies, but then doing it half the time or forgetting uh, tends to work much better. Uh, so we can actually get you started if you get a neuroma. Ah, okay. Thank you. So, Thank you. so coming and paying money to a podiatrist to listen to us talk to you, but not following through um, isn't great. So I don't recommend that avenue <laughs> with any of the things that we've talked about. Tom, does that, do you have a follow-up question? Oh, that's fine. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. And Sally, I notice you're here. You're here, you're here. You started this. Uh, <laughs> do, you do you have a question? I don't. I think this is great information. I appreciate it. I, I uh, had something else going on, so I've been up and down from the screen here, but um, no questions. I just think that every, well, I, we learn something new each time you talk. Oh, excellent. Oh, I, 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 informative people, uh, people in the know tend to do better than people that don't. Okay. And, but though I get a lot of people that, yes, I know, get, you hear that. It's amazing. We never outgrow the, yeah, I know, but syndrome of, of teenage years sometimes. <laughs> Indeed. Um, I, have a, I have a shoe question. Okay. Um, this is, I'm holding it up, a half flinger yes. cork uh, sole with a, with a tread on it. It looks very it. Birkenstockish. It is, it is, but this is felt. Yes, and, and that's fine too. It's very forgiving. Okay, I, I just wondered because um, I had trouble actually with the the place where it hit the top of my foot. Mm -hmm. If you and have I, higher arches, some of those type of shoes do tend to rub higher arches, so you have to watch it. Well, actually I have very flat feet, so oh, okay. I, I thought they'd be good and then maybe I, I don't know. I thought I was doing everything right. And it's, I have to find something else. <laughs> Is it very tight? No, it's not. I just, um, I think um, by the, um, I tend to uh, wear my shoes where the, the, the uh, uh, big toe p pokes through because I'm pulling with my, with my toes. Yes. Well, walk. that's another thing with, um, shoes that have no back is you tend to grip and use your toes a lot more. And if you have a, uh, a hammer toe condition um, or you don't have a hair, hammer coat, toe condition, it can lead to one or exacerbate or increase one because you're gripping your toes and curling your toes to hold those shoes on. And so that's another reason to go with a shoe with a back. Okay. Especially around the house, a slipper because you spend a lot of time at home walking around. And if you're constantly gripping your toes, you're again, leaning more toward the hammer toe conditions. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions uh, from our, our audience, oh, Dr. Jennifer, what a fantastic opportunity to get some really super advice. Uh, yes, I, I really enjoy <laughs> Thank um, you. spreading education and, and in informing people on how to take care of their feet. So maybe you don't need me that often <laughs> because the best word of mouth uh, for getting people in is, is uh, getting them better or keeping them better. Um, well, and I appreciate your, your uh, wonderful suggestion to uh, uh, post COVID, let's have a workshop where we can bring in our shoes and get some good advice and Yes. And, uh, and I'd uh, also like to add one last thing. I haven't seen a case of COVID toes yet, so I can't talk to you about that. So I'm glad you didn't have any questions because I haven't dealt with them yet. 
What are COVID toes? Yes, they're yes. saying that people with uh, COVID, they could get little blisters on the tops of their toes. Oh. Um, and they can last anywhere from three days to the entire time that you have the uh, virus. And oh. it looks, they're, they're red and little sores. And I haven't seen it yet. I've only seen pictures. So experience wise, I'm, I'm really not a good person to talk about that. <laughs> So you'll have to look up, look it up on the internet and read about it, but please stick to the reputable sites. Okay. All right. Well, I, so, goodbye, thank everybody. Bye. Thank, thank you, you guys for having hand. me again. Thank I really you. enjoyed thank you. meeting with you guys. Thank you. Hi. I, I look forward minute. to having a cup of coffee with all of you soon. There you go. So Jennifer, oh, yes. Jennifer, <laughs> this is Patty. Can you stay on for just a second? Yes. Hi, we, um, I just wanted to confirm the recording is when you did that, did you um, record it to the cloud or record it to your um, device? Probably to my device. Okay. Was I supposed to do it to the cloud? It's okay. It, um, it's just that we're going to need to upload it then from your computer and um, there's some instructions on how to do it. So um, if you could turn the recording off now, that'd be great just to be sure you've got 